Hello again, I am Blunty. Now, Nintendo president Shuntaro Furukawa has done something I don't think Nintendo have ever admitted to, at least publicly before. They have admitted fear. Fear of the future. Fear of their own self-sabotaging reputation. He talked about the company's eventual transition away from the Nintendo Switch, which, given the average lifespan for a console, tends to be seven to ten years or so, could be coming as soon as two or three years from right now. But he spoke about how its next hardware platform is, quote, of a major concern for them. And he's not just talking some PR messaging where it's a major concern that they plan it to be the, the, the biggest and best and most powerful, well, not, not, not most powerful because it's Nintendo, but most fun, most game-filled thing ever to have splurted out into the world. No. Instead, in very practical terms and with an eye to their last few decades of history, they've really started to worry about the Switch's successor and how it might absolutely nuke anything they've achieved over the last six years with the Nintendo Switch. This wasn't in a press interview when Nintendo's usual tactic of bullshit, lies, half-truths and just plain old hogwash would have been accepted and published with nearly a shrug. No, he was responding to an investor's Q&A, the people that they actually care about, the money. Uh, and he was responding to questions about keeping the incredible success of the Switch going and what comes next and how to capitalize off the Switch. A very fair question, especially for investors, because it's no secret that whenever Nintendo has had a huge success, they usually load up a good old-fashioned cowboy six-shooter with a fresh cylinder of uh, very fancy hollow point bullets and just start unloading all six rounds into their bare-ass feet like the absolute lunatics that they are. Nintendo 64 sold 33 million, the GameCube 22 million, and was vastly outsold by its competition, embarrassingly so actually. Nintendo Wii, huge success, 102 million, the Wii U, absolute abject failure and total embarrassment of 13 million. The Nintendo DS, 154 million, the Nintendo 3DS, despite not having the same reputation as a disaster like the Wii U, still only sold 76 million, half of what the DS sold in its own lifetime. And now we have the Nintendo Switch. The most recent number we have for that is already 107 million, already 5 million more than the Wii's entire lifetime sales, and it's still in its prime, it's still going, and it's still outselling both Xbox and PlayStation on a month-to-month -month basis, almost every month. At the investors meeting, Furukawa spoke uh, on the company and how it planned to alleviate the risks of unloading an armory's worth of footballers and nuking the uh, progress they've made with the 100 million plus user base that they've established with the Switch. They, of course, very, very naturally, and very, very sensibly want to hang on to as much as that user base as possible as they transition to new hardware in the next generation. He wants to build a long-term relationship, he said, with its users by both using and leveraging the psychological manipulation that comes with value-added subscription services. If you don't keep paying, you start missing out. Oh no! Uh, Nintendo accounts and using its IP outside of gaming, which is why, among other things, we're getting an extremely ill-advised new Mario movie with Chris Pratt as the voice of Mario for some reason, instead of the man who's been doing Mario's voice for as literally as long as Mario has had a voice with which to shout, woohoo! Furukawa also spoke somewhat less cynically about keeping the Switch strong and maintaining and continuing to expand the user base with strong software offerings. He said, Unlike in the past, we continue to have a large variety of games scheduled to be released, even beyond five years of release. This is because the Switch has had such a smooth launch, he continued, allowing us to focus all of our development resources on a single platform. He speaks partly, of course, about how the duality of the Switch covering both markets they used to serve separately, with a console and a handheld being utterly separate devices and having utterly separate capabilities and utterly separate game development paths. In a previous meeting like this, earlier this year, it was also somewhat vaguely hinted at that it's probably a pretty good idea and to, to, to plan to make sure whatever comes after the Switch is backwards compatible with the incredibly popular Switch library. Doi. The Switch is still growing strong, by the way, more than 23 million units sold over the last financial year alone, although that does represent a 20% drop over the year before and includes a percentage of existing owners merely replacing their old switches with the new OLED model, a moderate upgrade for at least the screen. But it's still on a trajectory that will likely mean it'll beat out the PlayStation 2's current record of 122 million lifetime sales. 
It's nice, at least, to see the notoriously arrogant Nintendo admit that they should be, and indeed are, holding a healthy dose of fear in their hearts while they develop for what comes next. And of course, make no mistake, at this point in time, the Switch successor is already deep into its development cycle. And no, I don't mean the often imagined Switch Pro, I mean genuinely next generation consoles. They're all working on the next thing, that's just how things work. In fact, my guess is we're probably only a year, maybe 18 months at the outstretch, from, from seeing headlines claiming to be genuine leaks about the next Nintendo console, or at least what their gimmicks might be this time around. Maybe it'll be something truly, genuinely game-changing innovative, like eyebrow sensing so they can tell how hard you're concentrating on a game, or how surprised you are. For right now though, my most immediate Nintendo-based concern is finding a way to afford to get a new Switch, because when I took mine out of its dock for the first time in quite some time, a week ago, so I could review those chunky Joy-Con things I looked at, I noticed its damn battery was swelling and pushing the case out and has put a crack in the corner of my case and everything. That's, that's a problem! I need to do something about that soon. So if you're as worried about my Switch as I am, well, super thanks uh, are open in the comments and they're active and the Patreon is always active. I'm, I'm just, just saying I could use a little help with that. <sighs> thanks to my existing patrons anyway. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. I am Blunty. Thanks for watching and I will catch you next time. Seriously though, really, really quite worried about it. It's not, it's not, it's not too bad yet, but it's at this point you need to start worrying because you don't want your lithium ion batteries to swell like that. They do that as a safety feature so they don't explode. But yeah, it's... um. <clears throat> it's, it's an issue.